Yo, what's up, people? Welcome back to the 10th episode. Crazy. Double digits. It's crazy how far we've come. Good job on making it this far, y'all. So, what are we doing today? Well, firstly, we gotta recap events. What we learned about events. Then we're gonna talk about, for this episode, we're gonna talk about in-game leader stats. You ever play a simulator? You saw those numbers at the top right? Those are your leader stats. We're gonna talk about that. In today's video after we recap events so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to insert a part and we're, we're doing the recap by the way um so let's say i have workspace dot art dot touched so that's a event attached to the part object colon connect function so what am i doing here well, I'm making something that's called an anonymous function. So this syntax makes it so that you don't have to first define the function and then do the event call. You can do it all in the same thing. So just use the syntax that I did. So just do function, call it, and end, and it should have a right closing uh, bracket on the right of the end. And then here it's just gonna say, well, this function, this block of code is gonna run whenever this touched event is, is, is fired. So this is what's called an anonymous function. And it kind of just combines the function call with the actual event statement here. So um, I use this method pretty often, but it depends on your needs. Um, just know there's, there is another method of um, using events for objects. You can just attach the function, uh, an anonymous function, which just means it doesn't have a name, right? And you don't need a name because it's specifically for the touched event. Hopefully that made sense. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do workspace dot part destroy. So colon, you notice how I did workspace dot part and then I did colon. So colon is going to let you call the methods of a particular object. In this case, it's workspace dot part. So a method is just a function that is attached to a particular object. Well, for now, I'll, I'll let you think of it like that. But basically, part has a unique method or function attached to it that lets you destroy the part. So what do you think this is gonna do? What do you think I'm trying to do here? Well, when workspace.part is touched, we're gonna connect an anonymous function, so a function with no name, and we're gonna say, we're gonna destroy workspace.part. And destroy is a method of this part object. So let's see what happens. Let's move it up, of course. I don't want I don't want the base plate to destroy it. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and hit play and let's load in. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and touch it and let's look at our workspace. By the way, so you see part right here. Boom gone and don't worry about that error there is a way to fix that error uh it's basically what happened is well i believe what happened is it called the function multiple times but the, like let's say the second time it called well like you can't destroy something that doesn't exist so when you hit an object remember that it, it's going to call it really fast right so don't worry about that error um, this is just for the sake of example but so yeah, that about does it for uh, the recap. That that's that's what an event is. You can use the touched event. There's plenty of events attached to each object that you have in the game. You know, try doing dot and scrolling down. Like let's say you insert a part. Try try doing dot next to the part and just seeing if you can find any purple lightning bolts and see what they do. Um, that's a good way to learn events. Uh, you kind of just have to pick them up as you go, uh, and you got to learn how to do that. So um, it's good to get practice in, guys. Either way, why not dive in? So let's dive in. All right. So we're going to learn about, we're actually going to be using the player's service today for the first time. We're going to be using a service other than Workspace. Believe it or not, crazy, scary, but I'm going to guide you. So let's do game dot players. So we're referencing the player's service dot player added. So this player added event, this is an event is unique to the player's service. And what that does is it says, okay, well, a player was added to the game. 
we can keep count of when a player joins the game. So let's connect an anonymous function. I'm just going to do that again. Um, and it should look like that. And you can pass one, one argument through this function, which is player. So we're going to say player. We can call it player. We can call it x. We can call it whatever we want. I'm going to call it player. But basically, it's just the player in this service here. And I'm going to explain that to you in a bit here. But um, for now, let's print player dot name. And once again, I'm going to explain to you <laughs> what all this means and where this is coming from. So let's go ahead and play. And what do you think it's going to do? Well, yeah, it's going to print man eating plant one, two, three, which is my name. That's my name. So how, how did it know player.name? Like, where is that coming from? Well, player means, okay, well, I'm going to go into the player service. While the game is running, you can see that my player is right here, right? You can see it. And then there's another me, which is my character model, the me that, that you can see that's in the workspace. But then there's the actual me. And that is in the player's service. So this is actually me, and this is just the model that gets created when I join the game. And so when we say, oh, no, whoopsie, um, let me go to, hold on, don't worry about what I'm doing right now. Um, hold up. Um, yeah, so anyways, as I was saying, when we say player, what that means is just referring to this object here. This is this is what it's referring to. So just like a part, this is also an object here. And this object has a property called name. So player dot name. So many play one, two, three. So player, this object dot name, which is one of its properties. And the name says many play one, two, three. So you can you can go through all of these properties. A lot of these are actually very useful properties, um, and they contain data and information about your actual player, uh, your user ID, which becomes useful later on uh, when we make simulators, and we want a way to have a unique reference to your to your player. Um, yeah, there's some interesting unique properties, but you're probably wondering what is in the player object. We have a backpack. We have player scripts, we have player GUI, player GUI. We're going to talk about a lot of that stuff. Um, and we have starter gear. So, of course, you don't need to know what any of this stuff is yet. I'm going to talk about this stuff in the intermediate series. Uh, but let's go ahead and stop the game. So let's go to our script. How do we make a leader stat? Okay, so there's this very specific way that Roblox lets us make a leader stats system and it's by inserting a folder with a very specific name into our player object so remember player that object of ours when we load in the game and you see that man you play one two three or whatever your name is well i'm going to show you what that folder is and what it should be called now the variable name doesn't matter but the name as a string does matter. So let me show you. So local leader stats equals instance dot new. So we're going to make a new object and we're going to call it, or sorry, we're, <laughs> the object we want is called a folder. And we want that leader stats, we want the parent to be equal to player. That means when we load in and well, actually, hold on. Let me let me show you an example. Let me show you how it works. So basically, leader stats dot name is equal to, and this is the most important part. Okay, I'm gonna explain all this stuff here in a minute. Just do what I do. Is equal to a lowercase l leader stats. It has to be this exact way. Okay, this is how Roblox is gonna know what you're trying to do. So let's start up play. And if you're if you've caught on to what I'm doing already, you're gonna know that there's gonna be a folder called leader stats in our player object. 
And there it is. Lady stats. It wasn't there before, but it is now. So now Roblox knows, okay, well, whatever's in this folder, let's say like a int value, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute, is going to create an actual leaderboard um, right here. So let's actually do that now. Let's go to script. And how do we make a value? So let's say I want cash or something like that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I also forgot to explain leaderstats.parent. So leaderstats.parent equals player. So remember the player object that we saw in the player service? If it's in, you saw that it was in the player, so it was the child of the player object. And player is the parent of later sets. Then we named it this exact name. It has to be this exact name. Now we're going to create below this a, let's say, cash um, currency. So we'll say instance, sorry instance.new and we're going to do int value so int value is a object because instance.new and then we do the object that we want an int value just lets us store any integer so that's an int value object and you'll see that appear in the later stats folder because we're going to do cache.parent equals later stats so we're going to put the cache we're going to set the leader stats to be the parent of this cache int value. Then we're going to set cache.name because we need to give it a name. It's equal to cache because we can name it whatever we want now. That, this is the only thing we want to be very serious about. So now, congratulations, you've created your very first leaderboard. Man any plant one, two, three, cache zero. What does it look like? Players. Here's our player object. We have the leader stats folder object. We go into it and we see cache. Leader stats is indeed the parent of cache. You can see here cache.parent equals leader stats. Cache.name equals cache. Yeah, it is cache. So all this stuff makes sense. And it's the specific way that Roblox wants us to make this folder and all this stuff to write the code, sorry, for this to work. So yeah, that's that's just, that's how you, in a very basic sense, make a leader stat system. And yes, of course, you can add more um, values, currencies, whatever. Um, you just gotta do the same process and set that value and then set its parent to leader stats. All of your currencies or your kills or um, your stage on an obby um, has to be childed to the leader stats. The leader stat has to be the parent, and the leader stats have to be in the player. So uh, go ahead and try that out, guys. Um, but yeah, that that pretty much covers it for this video. Um, hope you guys learned a lot. Hope it's been fun. But until next time, I will see you later. Peace.